Hi, this is Bob. Been a ham for 54 years. Got my ticket back in 1958. Back in the early 60s, why, uh, I started grinding crystals and I ground quite a few and uh, used to grind them with a uh, cleanser, kitchen cleanser, and I also ground them using valve grinding compound. Uh, the kitchen cleanser has soap in it. Uh, it's kind of messy, hard to clean, uh, causes problems, and uh, it works very slowly and the valve grinding compound too. So uh, what I discovered, this is my own innovation, was I use 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper of the type that you use on cars. You can buy this at automotive stores. So I put a piece of 600 grit uh, wet or dry paper on a piece of plate glass. I've got duct tape on both ends here. I put a little bit of water in the center, just a few drops of water, and uh, you can grind a crystal with that. Now this is the FT243 type crystal. I've taken one apart here. Here's one that was assembled. I've taken this one apart. These are the holders, the silver part. There's a small insulator and this is the crystal. Now when you're grinding you put the crystal onto the surface like that with the water and you move in a figure eight pattern. And uh, I want a little more water on there. You move in the figure eight pattern just like that and hold the crystal with your tip of your finger and you want to hold it very very softly because you want to take that material off flat you don't want to lose the parallel of the crystal and you go in a figure eight pattern just like that now the neat thing about doing it this way is when you want to check that crystal just slide it off and take a paper towel and dry it now don't squeeze it real hard or you'll crack it. Just squeeze it very gently. You can dry it off, put it back in the holder, and check it. To check it, I have a crystal oscillator here. This oscillator is from the 1977 ARRL handbook, page 534. It's just a single one transistor oscillator. I built this about uh, 25 years ago. It does a fine job and it's just got a, a junk meter in there from the junk box that I use to measure relative activity. Something like that's really handy. Now you can check the frequency of these crystals with a general coverage receiver like a, a IC706 Mark IIG. You can check it with an Alenco DX70. You can check it with a, with a IC746 ICOM. Many, many types of receivers have general coverage and you can check your crystals with that and see what frequency they're at. So you really don't need a counter, but a counter is nice. And you can hook a counter up to that test oscillator. Now, when I first, put a, when I first start on a crystal, if you're going to move it of any, any distance at all, you want to uh, etch the crystal rather than grind it. To etch it, I use a 3% hydrochloric solution, which is in the bottle here. You can see it's about uh, 3 quarters of an inch deep down in there. And I also have a jar full of water. Now these are plastic bottles. They are actually were peanut butter jars, and they are plastic. Now the plastic will not be etched by the etching solution. If you use a glass bottle, the etching solution will etch the glass, so you don't want to do that. The etching solution, where do you get it? This is it right here. It's called Wink Stain and Rust Remover, Rust and Stain Remover. It's a 3% solution. Be sure you read the cautions on the back. You don't want your children getting close to this stuff. You don't want your pets getting close to this stuff. You have to handle it with care because hydrofluoric acid is dangerous. Now this is only a 3% solution, so it's relatively safe, but it is poisonous. You don't want the kids to get into it. I, I just can't emphasize that enough. Now, uh, when you're doing these crystals, you may lap them uh, 400 laps before you move a kilohertz. And uh, one thing I may caution you about is that they move at different rates. You may lap at uh, 400 laps and it'll move a kilohertz. You may lap at 400 laps the next time and it'll move 10 kilohertz. So when you get close to the frequency that you want, you want to check it often. Sometimes I check them, I just lap them 10 laps on one side, 10 laps on the other side, and I check it. That's when I get real close because you don't want to overshoot. You can overshoot by about 2 kilohertz if you overshoot. Then you want to take solder. I bend it into a U and I rub a little bit of solder onto the crystal right in the center, right like that. Just rub it on there. Then I wipe it with the paper towel. 
and put it back in the holder and that will drag it down and it'll be okay that works pretty good you don't want to use the end of the solder you don't want to get flux on there that would mess things up okay so when you're starting out you want to etch the crystal if you've got it especially if you had to move a long distance the farthest I've moved one is, is a half a megahertz so what I made up is I took a big pen pulled the ends out of the big pen and drilled a hole right here this was a 5 30 seconds hole but that can be anything from 1 8 inch to 3 16 of an inch then I took a hacksaw and I cut it halfway down with the hacksaw it is not pretty it's got a lot of rough stuff in there I don't care that doesn't hurt a thing now to put the crystal in you just hold it in one hand like that spread the holder like that it's springy put the crystal down in there like so and there you are ready to go then you put it into the hydrofluoric acid solution and just leave it set and what I would do I let it set in there and I had to move the last one 400 kilohertz I let it set in there and every day at 8 o'clock in the morning I would take it out I would rinse it in the water I would dry it off on the paper towel I would put it back in the holder and you just hold it with your finger and the little spring you can just hold it you don't have to put the screws in put it into the tester and tested the frequency and it was moving about uh, uh, 15 16 kilohertz overnight sometimes up as much as 20 kilohertz and uh, like I say once you get close you grind them like this now the uh, uh, this I did not invent using the etching solution that was showed to me by K8 BYN Russ Somerville a great guy a good ham he's now a silent key but he showed me that about back in 1960 and uh, let's see what else I got on here I guess I covered just about everything I can caution you to take it easy, uh, take it slow, uh, take a crystal that you really don't care about that's on some weird frequency, take it apart and practice a little bit and uh, you can get pretty good at it. So I guess that's it. I'll say 73's and good DX guys.